Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Microsoft Chairman Bill Gates. Well, it all started 24 years ago here in New York City. 1983, Microsoft committed the company to graphical user interface. And there we were, the machines could barely keep up uh, displaying the text. Uh, the windows could barely fit in memory. Uh, it took us two more years to uh, get it all put together. And even explaining why we believed in graphical interface was very tough. But that was our bet, our bet that not only could we do fantastic things with windows, but it would become the platform that the software industry would build on. And that it would unleash an opportunity for hardware partners to do amazing things. It was 12 years later that finally we could say our vision of graphics interface had succeeded. Uh, with Windows 95 and Office 95, uh, there was an incredible level of excitement. Those products brought uh, unbelievable features like long file names. Can you imagine it? 32-bit <laughs> computing. And it really drove uh, graphical interface into the mainstream. Uh, it led the software industry that had been built up around Windows uh, to an incredible level of success. In fact, Windows became the majority of all software sold on all computers. And compatibility thrived with more and more manufacturers building great Windows machines. And so we, here we are 12 years la later. It's a very different industry today, far larger and tackling a much broader range of tasks. In fact, we can say that 12 years ago it was pretty narrow. Uh, it was creating documents, uh, hoping you could print those documents. Fonts were an amazing thing. People can not believe, wow, these fonts, uh, they're, they're just incredible. Uh, but we didn't have instant messaging. Uh, the internet was in its infancy. The browser was kind of an obscure feature that uh, first came. Uh, with Windows 95, and things like digital photography, or moving telephony onto the internet, or TV onto the internet, or digital buying and selling with all the world's marketplaces made more efficient through digital approaches. Those were just a gleam in our eye. Uh, there were a fifth as many PCs as there are today. Today, the vision of the digital lifestyle has really become mainstream. Uh, we talk about this as the digital decade, because it's now that we take the idea of uh, everyone taking digital photographs for granted, or being able to organize their music on the PC for granted, or being able to use Media Center to record TV shows, being able to get the very best games and play online uh, with other players. So everything's becoming digital. And the platform that allows people to be creative and build new applications and show off new hardware advances uh, that's a central element that allows it all to thrive. So Windows 95 was key to its era, and Windows Vista is key uh, to the era we have today. Broadband penetration is going up. 
every year. People's expectation for how we can do uh, better digital health records, better education, uh, better uh, uh, collaboration. Uh, all of those things rest on having this very strong uh, platform. Homes are expecting now to have integration, to be able to get their photos up in their living room, to be able to organize things in a rich way. Users don't want to move from device to device and have it all be, be different for them. And so as things have gone digital, people have uh, very, very high expectations. They want to be able to take their computers with them. In 1995, there were no portable machines, not to mention concepts like a tablet computer uh, that would bring something like ink uh, into the way that you interact with the, the machine. Uh, people want their PCs now to work with their phones, which have become incredibly smart and also a device that runs software. And you want to move back and forth and have that be something that's completely seamless. So Windows has this exciting central position, a position that is used by thousands and thousands of companies uh, to build their products. So it's been uh, 12 years since we brought Windows and Office together, done a release where we're just showing off the platform with Office Innovation, a breakthrough there, and the breakthroughs in Windows uh, coming out together. What kind of innovations are we talking about? Uh, well, we don't have time to list them all, uh, but I like to group them in the following way. I think of uh, the features that make it all easier. This is where we get things like search or uh, the office ribbon, the flip 3D, the thumbnail previews. Lots of things in that category of just making it easier. Because after all, people have a lot more files, a lot more photos, a lot more music. And we've got to make it simple uh, to move around and find those things without forcing the user to do a lot of work on their own. The second category I think of is safer. And there's a lot here because as the internet has become mainstream, uh, the issue of making sure your information is protected, that you don't lose it, that you understand your privacy and uh, software is not working against you, uh, that's become very important. So here we have uh, the new IE capabilities, anti-phishing, anti-spyware, uh, parental controls, a lot of things so that you have safety without having to spend a lot of time thinking about it. Then I think about entertainment. Uh, this is where all the great new games that use DX10 come in. We've got some neat free games that go along with it. This is photo gallery to take both movie clips and, and photos and tag them and uh, navigate through them. Uh, DVD maker that uh, makes it easy to do a rich uh, presentation and just send that off to all of the, the relatives. Support for high definition. High definition definitely moving into the mainstream and now Windows uh, with great support for that. Another category is, is better connected. Uh, this is how we make it simple to find the Wi-Fi resources and uh, understand if something's not working exactly what that is. Uh, this is where we've got the extensions for RSS. RSS support in Windows, RSS support in Office as well. XML capability throughout the system, lots of APIs that relate to that, and Office itself even using XML file formats. That's a standard that Microsoft got behind and has really gotten to critical mass for the entire industry, uh, facilitating exchange of information in a very rich way. It's a, definitely a, a platform for innovation. Uh, we've opened it up, and already we're seeing uh, partners doing great things. There are two ways that people are going to get a hold uh, of these products. Uh, with Vista, you can upgrade on the machine that you've got today. And we've made that easier than ever. Uh, people just go to the Windows Vista uh, Upgrade Advisor and then uh, try, uh, they run that. It'll tell them exactly uh, uh, what, what they, they need to do, what's going on with their system. Or, of course, they can get that uh, with a, uh, a new system. Well, the best way to understand uh, all the enthusiasm that you're hearing from Microsoft is to actually see the product running. Uh, so let me introduce Mike Siebert, uh, Corporate Vice President, to come up and uh, give us a quick glimpse of Windows Vista and Office 2007. Welcome, Mike. Thanks, Bill. Well, good afternoon, everybody. 
Well, thank you all for being here tonight, and, and more importantly, thank you to all the families and beta testers who are gathered here tonight that have helped to make Windows Vista and Office 2007 the highest quality releases in Windows and Office history. Now, I know because of that, many of you are very familiar with these products, and so I'm going to do this demonstration from a different point of view. What I'd like to do over the next few minutes is just walk you through a little bit how these products are helping our family. I'm a father and a husband. And, and how these products are helping our family to live our digital lifestyle, how they're making it easier and safer and better connected and more entertaining as we go about living our digital lifestyle. Well, let's start with, uh, with photos. You know, in the last year, more than 2 billion photos have been taken digitally around the world. It's no secret that this scenario has burst into the mainstream. And, you know, that's why it's so important that photo management become easier than it's ever been before. Now, in our family, we use tagging, Windows Vista's new tagging feature in the Windows Photo Gallery. Every time I bring in pictures from my digital camera, I just add one of these keywords or several of these keywords to each picture with a simple drag and drop maneuver. And what that allows me to do is to use the built-in search capabilities of Windows Vista to find all of my pictures. Gone are the days when I have to remember where I keep all these pictures and which folders and how I have it organized because Windows Vista does it for me. I type the first few letters of my son Nathan's name and up comes every picture in my entire library that has to do with Nathan. Well, I'll call up another picture here. You know, one of our, uh, one of our beta testers, our Windows Vista families, Robin Mason, she tells us that she has more than 40 thousand pictures in her library and that means it better be pretty efficient to get the editing job done and our testers told us we had to make editing easier than ever before and build it right into Windows Vista and so I can do quick things like crop the picture if I want to or make adjustments to the color or the exposure or take a look at this with a single click I can just run through my pictures one by one and give them that perfect exposure isn't that fantastic that beautiful exposure every time well you know, one of the things that our testers have told us, thank you, one of the things our testers have told us is that, you know, it's really important that we build right in the DVD burning capabilities. And so I've chosen just a few pictures here that I'm going to, and videos that I'm going to make a DVD out of. And you may notice that this burn icon is scattered in a few areas throughout Windows Vista, so it's always right there, easy for me to find. I'll simply click on it with those pictures and videos and click Next. And you'll see that I get some great options on the DVD menus that I can choose from. And I like this one right here. I'll click Preview, and Windows Vista will make me a beautiful DVD to send to my grandma. Look at that. It's ready to render and play on any DVD player in the world. It's that easy, and it's built right in. Well, in our family, we don't just uh, manage digital photos. We also do projects. And they range from the simple to the complex. I'll just use the built-in search and pull up a document. Now, this would be a, uh, a document that you'd send out around the holidays, maybe that annual letter about your year. And as you can see, this particular one needs a little bit of work. And so, you know, in the old days, it might have taken me a couple of hours to figure out how to get this formatted just right. But with Office 2007, everything's been made easier. The ribbon gives me all these great choices that are relevant to what I want to do. And one of the things I want to start with with this document is to get some formatting work done. Now, what I can do, the old days I would have had to go in and make font changes and try to figure out how to get the columns to wrap around those pictures. But what I can do with Office 2007 is I can simply change the entire format of this document globally. And watch carefully at the document as I mouse over these different settings. Look at that. The entire document changes for me as I go along. And I can see exactly how it will look after I format it. Fantastic. I like that one right there. And so... Now I've got the job partly done, but remember that picture that we edited a minute ago and, and lightened up? I want to pull that into the document as well. And so I'll simply search for it using Windows Vista's built-in search, bring it right in. It comes full size, but no problem. With Office 2007, I don't have to guess what percentage to make it. I can just drag it to the size I want. And by the way, notice the ribbon at the top. It's changed. Because I'm now working with pictures, and Office 2007 knows I'm working with pictures, and that ribbon has been smart. I've got a selection right here to center that picture. I want to take this nice picture of Nathan and put him on the left, and this picture of Jonathan, and I'll put him at right center. Well, I'm almost done with this document, and it's almost ready to go. But, you know, I want it to have that polish 
uh, that will really make me proud because it's going to be going to my extended family. How many of you are the tech support for your entire extended family? I think this is probably the gathering of people that that was pretty relevant. Well, you know what? That letter to the family had better look good then, shouldn't it? And so I want it to have the, the rounded edges and the reflective effects and things like that. The kinds of things that maybe would have used to take a PhD in graphic arts to figure out. Not with Office 2007. What I can do is simply mouse right over that, click it, and look at that. In less than two minutes, a beautiful document ready for broad distribution. Isn't that great? I love Office 2007. It makes everything so much easier. Well, what am I going to do with all that time I just saved? Well, in our case, games for Windows. That's what. And, you know, Windows is by far the world's most popular gaming platform. More than 200 million people play Windows games around the world, and Windows Vista has taken it all to the next level. Windows Vista makes gaming more powerful with DirectX 10 technology and upcoming titles like Company of Heroes and Flight Simulator 10. Company of Heroes is here now. And, of course, this is my Games Explorer. This is what Windows Vista does to make my gaming experience easier than it's ever been because all my games are here in one place where I can manage them the same way. I'm going to step into an upcoming release of Uno for Windows Vista, and uh, I'm going to use my Xbox 360 controller plugged right into my Windows Vista machine, and I'm going to pull up a multiplayer game because what Uno for Windows Vista can do is something that games before have never been able to do, and that's cross-platform play. You're going to see the familiar Xbox 360 set of settings, and I'm going to use the Microsoft Live gaming platform to see if I can find my 10-year-old son Jonathan at home in Seattle, Washington on his Xbox. Now, he goes by the alias Ice Monkey, and you can see that he's online. That's good because I'm on stage, and this would be important at this point. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and select him and invite him to play this game of Uno with me. Now, you know, I travel uh, quite a bit. And, um, you know, maybe I'm in a hotel room in Tokyo with my Windows Vista laptop. And it's really important that I, I'm able to have connections with my family when I'm gone. And this scenario is fantastic because it allows me to steal away a few minutes to play a game with Jonathan across, you know, thousands of miles, eight time zones, and two gaming platforms. Take a look at this. As I press start, we launch into a game together, and in just a moment, across all those times, we'll be playing cross-platform gameplay. And where'd it go? There it is. And there, so there, now you need to applaud that, because I had to wait a minute. All right. <laughs> And there it is. We're all in this game playing across the thousands of miles. Me on my Windows Vista machine and Jonathan on his Xbox. Well, that's something that my boys just love. And now I'm going to show you something that they just hate. And that's parental controls. You know, Microsoft is really leading the way when it comes to family safety. And it's so important in today's connected world. I'll show you a scenario where I'm going to manage the settings for Nathan, my 11-year-old son, and he has a PC in his bedroom. And it's really important to me to be able to understand what's happening on his PC behind closed doors. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set some time limits for Nathan. It's as easy as that. Now the overnight hours are off limits for Nathan. It's as simple as that. Isn't that fantastic? I'll go into games. And, you know, Nathan's 11 years old. But I'm going to set games for him for teen and above uh, using the electronic software ratings board settings built right into Windows Vista along with nine ev other ratings boards around the world. And I can do that because I know about Nathan's maturity. And by the way, right here, I can choose specific teen games that may not be appropriate for him and go ahead and block those. And probably more importantly, under this link, I can view activity reports. It's a report card of sorts that tells me the kinds of experiences Nathan's had the kinds of websites he's tried to access and been blocked, the kinds of instant messaging sessions and email sessions he's having, the games he's attempted to launch, so that we can have the right kinds of conversations and I can help to keep my family safe. So that's just a little bit about what happens in a bedroom scenario with a child's PC. But what about the living room? You know, one of the most exciting things happening in our, our entire industry today is 
the explosive growth of big panel TVs in people's living rooms. It's, the, it's one of the most exciting things. And you know, the key question that people are asking about those, that scenario is, how do I get all that interesting PC content onto that big panel in the living room? Those photos, those videos, those downloadables from the internet. Well, the best answer to that, the most powerful answer, may surprise you. Because it's something that 10 and a half million people already have. And that's Media Center Extender built right in to every Xbox 360 around the world. I've just switched to an Xbox. This is output from an Xbox. I'm going to use my Xbox box controller. And in this house, it's connected to a Windows Vista PC. You can see the new Windows Vista Media Center user interface. Many more menu choices surfaced up top to take advantage of today's 16 by 9 monitors. I'll go into, oh, I'll take a recorded program from The Office. Uh, this is a high-definition recording that I made on my Windows Vista machine using built-in cable card support coming on upcoming PCs. And I can, of course, record any high-definition feed I want. I don't have to pay a subscription. I don't have to pay a download feed. And I get any choice I want, not just a few studios. So there's a high-definition feed of The Office coming in through my Windows Vista PC but being played on my Xbox. Take a look at this, this gorgeous menu overlay where I can actually go. Look at that high fidelity coming across my home network. Because what we like to do on our um, Media Center extender is we like to look at our photos. And you know, it's best if it has a musical overlay. And so I'm going to go and pick a track from my Windows Vista PC for Angels and Airwaves. We're so fortunate to have them with us tonight. Weren't they fun? And um, come on, weren't they great? That was great. That was Angels and Airwaves opening up. I'm going to pick off a track from them. I'm going to play it. And now that track starts, and all I have to do is back out a spot and pick some pictures. And you know, when the extended family comes over, it's just great. We can all get together, take a look at those summer photos, and it's easier than ever before to get them up on that big panel and look at that slideshow. The music track, the pictures, our summer vacation, it's all right there in my Media Center extender connected to a Windows Vista machine. All that was on an Xbox 360. Well, that's been just a little picture of fun and entertainment. And you know, entertainment comes in many forms, and fun comes in many forms. Sometimes it's sophisticated things like high-definition feeds, and sometimes it's simple things, little elegant things that just make the PC experience great. We've sprinkled those all throughout Windows Vista. And you know, one of my favorite ones is something that's an, a Windows Vista Ultimate Extra. It's just a simple little thing that answers the question, hey, you know all those backgrounds, all those beautiful vistas that seem to be shown with Windows Vista PCs all the time? Why shouldn't they do something more interesting than just sit there? Why shouldn't they do something just a little bit surprising? Something like this. Dream Scene, a Windows Vista Ultimate Extra. Isn't that fantastic? A motion video on my desktop. Well, look, it's been my pleasure to share with you some of the ways that for our family, Windows Vista and Office 2007 are making our digital lifestyle easier, safer, better connected when we're on the go, and a lot more fun. Thank you for everything you're doing to make these products great, and have a great time tonight. Thank you very much. Wow. Every so often you experience something so new so delightfully unexpected wow. that there's only one word for it. Wow.
Introducing Windows Vista. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Microsoft Chief Executive Officer Steve Ballmer. Well, thanks. It's an honor and privilege to have a chance to be here today uh, with you all uh, for what is not only the biggest launch uh, in software history, it's also the broadest release we've ever done. I hope you liked a little bit of the... Uh, uh, TV footage that we just had a chance to show you. Uh, we're certainly incredibly, incredibly excited about the product. We're incredibly excited about what I think it means to our customers, to the PC industry, and uh, really we hit the ground running. Starting with the first copies of the product. Uh, I know we had one delivered in New Zealand. I've been hearing about the purchasing going on in Akihabara in, in Japan and we're kind of advancing around the world in, in what is truly, uh, truly an amazing global event. The product will be available today, broadly speaking, since it's already tomorrow, today, whatever, in some of these countries. Uh, we'll be available in over 70 countries. We start out in 19 languages. We'll be available in over 99 languages by the end of this calendar year. Uh, Afterward, you can go and think whether you can name 99 individual languages, but that's the sort of the extent and the cover and the reach uh, that we'll have with the Windows Vista product. The product's available in over 39,000 retail outlets, in addition to people selling direct software resellers, hardware resellers around the world. And you can literally find computers from thousands of different computer OEMs, system builders, available starting tomorrow that have Windows Vista uh, pre-installed on them, making it really the biggest impact release we've ever done. If you just take a look at it and say, how many technical people, developers, IT people, will be involved working with Vista? We estimate that number will be over a million in Europe alone by the end of this year, and close to two million here in the United States people who will learn Vista, use Vista, and professionally be involved with it, supporting it for consumers and, and businesses alike. So truly the broadest release uh, in software history. We feel like, you know, in many senses, it's also the best uh, release we've ever made in terms of galvanizing industry support. Hardware vendors, software application writers, uh, people who build cameras and peripherals and photo frames. There will be over 1.5 million individual hardware devices that are supported and enabled. And if you bought an old version, a new version, you're interested in some new thing that's coming along or something you've had for years on the hardware front, Windows Vista will have by far the broadest support for hardware of any operating system uh, in all time. There are already over 2,500, 2,500 individual software products that have been certified with Windows Vista. And so old applications as well as people taking advantage of new capabilities to do exciting new things. The New York Times has a new reader application, which is a phenomenal online experience. And you'll just see more and more of these uh, specialized applications that really look like Vista, feel like Vista, and uh, share, if you will, in some of the wow uh, that is at the heart and soul of Vista. You know, if you think back, as Bill did, to, to the time of 1995, the PC was, was sort of solitary in the technology world. The internet wasn't really developed. People didn't own cell phones really very much or digital cameras. Here we are 12 years later, and Windows Vista comes to market. There's many technology products. But at the center, the product that brings it all together, the hardware, the cameras, the photo frames, the, the uh, 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 connectivity to other machines in the house, the new applications, connections to websites, it really is the PC running Windows, and particularly Windows Vista, that enables that, that next generation. We have a lot of partners that we've worked with in the development of Vista, 
just as we had over 5 million beta testers that we worked with uh, in the development of Windows Vista. Today, we want to have a chance to have you experience, hear from, and see some of the innovations from our partners. And we're going to have a chance to hear from Intel, from AMD, from Dell, HP, Toshiba, Sony, Gateway, and many, many more about some of the hardware innovations that really take advantage of Windows Vista and Office 2007. So why don't we roll the video, and then some of these partners will have a chance to join me here on stage. Roll the video, please. This is the best of all possible starts to 2007. Three major components arriving at the same time. Microsoft, Windows Vista, Microsoft Office 2007 system, and the Core 2 Duo processor. Windows Vista really does make it easier for users to manage their digital lifestyle. I think there is a buzz of excitement, and I think it's the foundation for a great year. More performance, more possibilities, great opportunities for consumers. Hewlett Packard's excited about Windows Vista and Office 2007 on HP PCs. They simplify the computing experience for our consumer and business customers, making it easier, more secure, more entertaining, and better connected. And this experience extends to HP printers, cameras, and handhelds. We're confident that Windows Vista and Office 2007 will make a difference in HP's customers' lives at work, at home, or on the go. The new experiences that Windows Vista and Office 2007 offers will further accelerate the expansion of the PC market and provide end users with a new way of interacting with their PCs. Bio was able to take full advantage of the digital media enjoyment and connectivity made possible through Windows Vista combined with our innovative hardware design, especially in Sony's HD world. Windows Vista and the new Microsoft 2007 Office system, uh, customers have heard a lot about it. Uh, I think they are going to be dazzled with some of the visual capabilities and the new productivity tools. The opportunities for Dell with both our Dimension, our Inspiron, and our other desktop and notebook systems are really to unleash the imagination and creativity of our customers. With over two-thirds of our customers during the holiday seasons are registering for Microsoft Vista systems as they come into this new year. The launch of Windows Vista represents a gold standard in collaboration between Toshiba and Microsoft. Together we developed the Portage R400, a notebook computer that truly advances the state of art in mobile computing. I think the Vista launch re-energizes the whole marketplace. Once consumers really get their hands on this, combine Windows Vista with the great platforms that we're bringing to the market, they're going to have an opportunity to see what the PC can really do as the hub of the home for work, play, sharing, and family experiences. We feel that AMD is really in a great position to leverage all of the innovation that Microsoft built into Windows Vista. Microsoft Office in itself has been both simplified and bringing more power, and the combination of the two is really becoming the ultimate platform. For all the faithful AMD and ATI customers out there, my recommendation is to move to Windows Vista as quickly as you can. I hope you get something of a sense of the enthusiasm the partners have and some of the reasons and the fantastic innovations that our partners will bring, particularly in the hardware front, uh, around Windows Vista. I would like to have a chance to introduce some of the partners who are here today to you and have them join us here on stage. First, let me say thank you and welcome to the CEO of Dell, Kevin Rollins. Kevin. Thank you. Hey, Kevin. Thanks. Just the first edition for you. Original edition, Vista. <laughs> Next, please welcome on stage the Executive Vice President, Sales and Marketing for Intel Corporation, Sean Maloney. Please welcome Sean. Sean, this your first edition. Wonderful. Thanks very much. <laughs> nice. From Toshiba Corporation, please welcome Hisus Hisatsugu. Nonaka, executive, uh, CEO and President of the Computer Division for Toshiba Corporation. Nonaka-san. Uh, thank you very much. Nice to see you. Thank you. 
Thanks for your support. Congratulations. First edition. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. From AMD Corporation Chairman and CEO Hector Ruiz. Thank you. And from Hewlett Packard, please welcome the Executive Vice President of the Personal Systems Group, Todd Bradley. John. I want to thank all of these folks for the incredible work, the incredible innovation, and I certainly encourage all of you to get out and check out the new systems coming from these companies with the, with the great technology and semiconductors uh, that have been developed and that we've worked together to exploit so hard. I know you'll appreciate them. Thanks to all of you, and thanks to all of you for this time. We appreciate it. Well, pulling together uh, the most important, most used software uh, at a whole new level uh, with Vista and the most used application with Office 2007, there's a lot of people who've come together to make it happen inside the company and outside the company. We really want to thank uh, the employees for their hard work. This has been one that uh, required a lot of dedication and driving to get that uh, highest level of quality. I want to uh, make a special mention of Jim Alchin, uh, has been at Microsoft 16 years and really personally made a huge commitment to Vista quality. Another group that uh, played a special role in helping us get this uh, to come together are the, the customers who have been working with us uh, even before the product release. Uh, and the, the numbers here are pretty unbelievable. We've had over, had over 5 million people download uh, copies of Windows Vista and Office 2007. What that means is this is by far the most tested and highest quality release uh, that we've ever made. Uh, our testing groups internally were able to automate and do more performance testing than ever before. We were able to take observations of user sessions and see what people were having a hard time with. In the case of Office, they observed over a billion different sessions. We're able to look at that and use that to tune the user interface in the right way. So this means we're not just guessing about what customers want. Uh, they, have, they have spoken, they have told us, uh, and that reflects in the product, making it safer and easier uh, for the literally hundreds of millions who will use the, the product from this point forward. Uh, so that has been an incredible involvement. And, the amount of time is uh, uh, phenomenal, uh, so a special thanks to everyone who participated in the beta testing. Now, a, a really special part of the customer feedback was a completely new program we did where we said we've got to make sure uh, we understand how these products are going to work in the, the home. And we're really talking about the digital lifestyle. Uh, let's get out there and, and see it at work. And let's listen to what families have to say about what they want. Uh, so we, two years before uh, today, we started this program. And we went out to 50 families in seven different countries, including Japan, Germany, Mexico. Uh, and we gave them uh, the Beta One product. And we spent lots of time with them. You know, hearing what they'd like to do, hearing their frustrations. Uh, they identified, just this group alone, over 800 things uh, that they wanted us to change. And uh, so even features like uh, what we've got uh, in the case of the DVD uh, definitely came directly uh, out of this. Uh, so we've got uh, a video that, that talks about this program. Let's take a look at that. Ultimately, the success of Windows Vista and Office 2007 
are because of the participation of so many people around the globe from different walks of life, from different expertise levels, telling us how that software should work. It definitely changed my viewpoint of Microsoft because they solicited feedback from folks like myself that are just consumers that have an interest in their product. We'd heard of people testing certain things for Microsoft, but you know, for an actual new operating system, we're like, wow. They were very interested and would spend hours here asking us exactly what we liked and what we didn't like. I felt very strongly that there should be a burn to CD button. My opinion was listened to, and here was feedback that Microsoft took and actually put into the Vista program. It just reinforced the fact that, you know, they're just trying to create a great product. The first thing that I would tell people about Vista is that it's completely updated. It's become a more streamlined program. It's become much prettier to look at. We definitely love the fresh new look of Office. There's so many functions, and having them kind of all laid out for you on the top there makes it easy to access stuff you've never accessed before. If you're not creative, the new Office 2007 product will make you creative. <laughs> Vista has done a significant impact for me personally. I feel very free and open to do things on the machine that I probably wouldn't have done before. I'm more willing to go through a lot of the settings, search for things. It's uh, very inviting. Cassidy and I have really started to work together a lot more on the computer than I think we normally would have also. I think Microsoft definitely showed that they are willing and, and able to listen to people. And the feedback that I gave them will make a difference in a product that we sell all over the world. It feels very unique, like we were singled out, and that our opinions matter. I want you all to join us in welcoming the Regan family. We've had a great opportunity to get to know one another. I got to ask you, what was it like to be a Windows Vista family? It was, it was truly an exceptional experience. It really was. That's great. That's great. And what, tell us a little bit about the feature that you guys drove us to go do in Windows Vista. I thought it was a really good idea to have a burn to disk button right in photo gallery. And you guys must have agreed, because it's in there. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. We really want to thank you for helping us create All the right. highest quality release ever. Uh, we're going to make sure you get the very, very first copy. Uh, so here it is. Uh, first copy uh, signed. Thank you very much. And so now we come to the, the moment we've all been waiting for. Well... You know, we say the wow starts now. It's kind of time to launch this product. But it hasn't happened. Oh, ho, ho, not yet. <laughs> Regans are really going to help us right now start the wow. So kids, on the count of three, Ready? we'll push the wow starts now button and launch Windows Vista. What do you think? One, two, three. Go, yeah! Yeah!
My name is Caroline, and we're the Reagan family. And we just went on stage with Bill Gates. We just launched Windows Vista and Office 2007. And, and ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen. angels and airways.